Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Vancouver Survival Guide. This is our third episode at hashtag Vancouver Survival Guide. And I am Mike Saramba being your host today. And as per usual, this podcast, this guide is brought to you by Vancouver Real, but it is also sponsored by Floathouse. And floathouse.ca is our website where you can go and check out flotation therapy. And we're continuing along with this survival guide to bring you resources and content and, and perspectives from people within our city who are kind of connected in one way, shape, or form to the different themes that we've created for the survival guide. And hopefully to bring you some useful advice or suggestions or different points of view that might um, support you in whatever it is that you might be pursuing while living in our city, while surviving in our city, but hopefully thriving in our city is what we want to do with this goal of this guide is to encourage you towards that thriving element because there are so many opportunities we have in this beautiful city of ours. So, um, And today we are joined by Erica Finley from Unbounce. And as I toggle over to you, there you are. Um, thanks for coming on, first of all. Appreciate well, it. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Today. And I, I was commenting earlier how I love your bright red dress that you're wearing. If you're not watching us or you're just listening, then uh, check, check it out on YouTube or Facebook because it's just brightening up this cloudy Sunday that we are experiencing, the never-ending cloudiness of Vancouver right now. The sun will come. It's it's coming. You think so? You feel it? <laughs> I do. Okay, yeah. me too. I it's, It starts to peek through at the end of the day sometimes. Mm. I'm mm. driving around. I can see it just over at UBC or something. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> Summer's coming, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Had a, we had a great big chunk of it yesterday. And so it's true. It's amazing. It's true. I know. I was, I was indoors most of the day, so I just saw it from windows. But it looked beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I will be out there soon enough. My time will come. <laughs> so, But thanks for coming on, on your Sunday. I really appreciate it. Um, again, it's Erica Finley from Unbounce. And today's topic is about community and community and technology, as you guys are definitely a technology-based uh, company. But can you first share with us a little bit about Unbounce? And, and you are the community engagement manager at Unbounce. Um, so maybe tell us about what Unbounce is and then talk about what your role is on Unbounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Unbounce is an amazing success story. We're a tech company that was founded here in Vancouver, right uh, in Gastown. Mm. Uh, 2009, there were six co-founders and uh, it's an amazing story because they all got together. Um, Rick Perot, uh, Ali Gardner, uh, Carter Gilchrist, uh, uh, Jason Murphy, uh, Carl Schmidt and Justin Stacey. So the pressure is on there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and five five of the founders are still involved in the business day-to-day. -day. Cool. Very cool. And that just creates a really unique uh, and amazing company. They've grown sustainably. Uh, we're now at just over 180 people. Wow. And uh, we build conversion tools for marketers. Okay. So, so landing pages. The landing pages. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've learned what the necessity of a landing page is now since starting Floathouse. Mm -hmm. Um, so landing pages, what else do you guys provide for people? So the landing page is, is kind of our, our bulk. Okay. Our, it's our big, big product. Yep. Um, and we have an app. You, got, you can go in and um, you don't need a, a whole tech team or developers hmm. to create your landing page. So I'm sure you've had this experience right. where you just want to change one thing on the page. Yes. Or you want to you know, make some updates. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to call your web developer that you've contracted out. You can just get in there and do it yourself. Okay. Which cool. is huge. It kind of relieves that that pinch point or that pain of having to go right. to IT to do it. Okay, cool. Um, as well as we have the ability to uh, create a couple different variants, so you can test um, different uh, landing pages and how how they perform hmm. and how you can get those conversions. So we're all about converting people, uh, getting them to fill in their information or buy the product. So if I have my own website and I want to create a landing page, I don't have to like change my server or my hosting or anything like that. Like, is this something I plug into or do you guys we have do one all the, the We do all the hosting for you. Oh, okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Sweet, so you become your host, but then you specialize in these amazing landing pages that help to mm -hmm. guide people to whatever you want them Absolutely. to go to. Absolutely, yeah. Gotcha. And we have a world-class customer success team that can help uh, you know, entrepreneurs or marketers and marketing teams to uh, make these landing pages incredible and, cool. and to, to do the job that they're meant to do. Awesome. Okay. Well, I have more landing page questions, but mm -hmm. that's not really the focus of today. I <laughs> honestly, I was like I was rhyming off like 10 in my head there. Um, but as the community engagement manager, your position at Unbounce, talk to us about what your responsibilities are and what your position is in, entailed to do. 
So I'm very fortunate uh, in that I am able to work with our founders. So Rick Pro, our CEO, and um, Carl Schmidt, and uh, and Carter, and Jason, and um, Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I should have gone through all six of them again. <laughs> so basically, okay. um, all the founders. Know, yeah, all the founders. Amazing people. So, so really, there was um, this need to to uh, let Vancouver know that we, as a company, were here. Mm. So um, Rick was doing some some pitches, and he would be out in the tech community at some meetups, and he um, would constantly get the question, like, "Oh, you know, where where are you guys from?" He'd be like, well, "We're Vancouver based. Yeah. Our office is just down right. the street." Um, and for us, you know, having our, our whole business online, having global customers, um, it was it was difficult in those days to get peop- the awareness that we were a Vancouver mm-hmm. based company. Right, and that's that's super important, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. And so what Rick did is that uh, he was really intentional, and um, along with our other great team members, built a, a community events space. Okay. So we mm-hmm. have a. a a huge uh, spot in our office that is dedicated to hosting meetups, uh, technical events, and um, that we ourselves as staff get to use. Mm-hmm. So we can host up to 200 people. Um, wow. it's, we've got kegs on tap. Uh, we bring in some food. Like it's a, alcohol kegs? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's a really it's a really incredible place because it is the hub of, of the tech community. And cool. we're hosting about 100 events a year. Wow. Which is... Yeah, two to three a week, and um, yeah. they are a full gamut of everything from our own uh, open houses, mm-hmm. so where we invite the community to come check us out, check out what a great place we are to work, and get a chance to meet um, our team and other people in the community. Cool. Uh, we host not-for-profit um, fundraisers. We're really involved with an organization called Ladies Learning Code. Okay. So uh, increasing diversity in tech is specifically when it comes to getting women into uh, more technical roles is something we're really right. doubling down on cool. this year. And so we're we're set to host about 50 workshops where we have women nice. um, who are uh, entrepreneurs or maybe they're working within kind of a st- standard industry, but they would like to be able to know how to program their website or, cool. or work with their own Shopify site to, um, to yeah, grow their business. So. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So... You guys just realized, okay, we're this amazing company from Vancouver. Nobody knows we're here. No one knows we're about. So how do we become mm-hmm. more entwined and re- recognizable and connected with our community? For sure. Excellent. Yeah, and we're already doing such a great job. Um, like Ali Gardner travels all over the world and speaking, and so we had this great um, presence internationally, but just needed to put that emphasis on building community here in Vancouver. Excellent. Cool. And so I think, and I think some of our questions uh, will get into why you guys feel that's so important, but. Mm-hmm. Um, so the last few weeks, as I mentioned, we've been talking about community here on the Vancouver Survival Guide and how to engage more of those around you. Um, with your company focusing on the growth of networks and contacts for businesses, how does Unbounce help to create community for entrepreneurs? That's a great question. So we have a, a, a discounted plan uh, and a, a whole opportunity for startups and for entrepreneurs to connect with us, and we will... Um, work with them to get their landing page up as well as um, give them a significant discount on that page. Cool. Um, we also host all sorts of events, as I mentioned, in that great space. So uh, we host Tech Vancouver Night, where it's an opportunity for companies to get up and, and pitch and to, to share what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think that oh, also our involvement in the Technology Community Alliance, which okay. is more about our involvement from social impact side, but it's also creating, we're, we're working on creating a stronger, more vibrant ecosystem for the tech community, gotcha. which is going to be able to support and foster cool. entrepreneurs as they start up. Very cool. Um, so why, you know, why do you feel it is important for entrepreneurs to even no matter what stage they're at, to like start to get somehow connected with their community? 
Uh, you mean community from like the community that they do business in yes. or the greater so, community? I think the Vancouver. community they do business in for sure. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's going to bring in yeah. different referrals and clientele. But yeah, maybe even beyond that, just like in terms of their neighbors that maybe aren't going to be their direct um, clients necessarily. But why is it important still to be involved with community? Like why did, why did Unbounce want to get involved with their community? I think it's just part of the DNA of our, our company. Mm-hmm. Um, we are committed to being a responsible company and and know that we have now kind of built our business and done done well and it's time for us to to give back and to uh, to make that difference. Um, there's some there's some really significant needs um, close close to where we have our offices and okay. also you know the we started in Gastown. Yeah. Um, there's there's some big big social issues in Vancouver 100 percent actually kind of ties into my next question mm-hmm. here yeah and uh, it's, oh sorry yeah go ahead please <laughs> um, you got more to say I, I want to hear and um as a tech I mean we're still really focused there's still focus on resource um companies being our, our driving um economic force here in the province but the reality is is that the future is technology mm-hmm. and even yep. those even those Older, more established companies are looking towards pivoting to being tech focused or tech first. Right. And so, as tech employees, there's a few things that um, you know that we can all do. We're all most tech employees are making more than the average employee. Also, supported more. Um, tech companies have are very much about being employee first. Okay. And so, I think with that support from a corporate standpoint, you're able to make a difference. Right. Um, because you're not. You're not, you know, in such such dire straits. Right. You have a little bit more resources yeah, of your own time, your own like you know, mm-hmm. uh, mental capacity, your energy to yeah. to yeah, give yeah, back. Absolutely, opportunity to um, share your expertise, um, right. And right. you know, have that either be you know volunteer hours that. Uh, your company pays for Mm -hmm. um we have a matching program so um you know individuals particularly committed about an organization um we just recently uh donated to women against violence against women Mm. one of our our team members did a campaign over the fall called october where he wore a tie every day okay (laughs) and he raised um he raised just under thirty five hundred dollars oh wow unbalance will match um for any of our employees that are interested will match up to fifteen hundred dollars cool so that's that's pretty significant when you look at making an impact with an organization that you're really passionate about. absolutely that's huge no Mm -hmm. and it's doing fun campaigns like that too can just you know, get everyone. Uh, I don't know. It's, it changes the energy in the work in the work environment as well, mm-hmm. too. So it's yeah, not just being um, giving back, but it's also yeah, just creating good vibes. You know, and inspiring people. So, um, so yeah. How does Unbounce un- Unbounce partner with say nonprofits in Vancouver wanting to get their word out there? Do you guys work with nonprofits at all? We do. Yeah. In fact, that's a lot of of my role. And um, just to kind of go back to that initial question that you had and as the community engagement manager this the role that I'm fortunate enough to to play at Unbounce mm-hmm. is connecting uh, the community connecting not-for-profits to Unbounce and our employees um, to those not-for-profits right and making sure that if we are uh, lending our expertise that it's the right fit um, we've recently been working with a, a Vancouver based a not-for-profit called Peace Geeks okay. does international work with refugees and immigrants and helping them connect to the services in their newly their new homes. Oh wow! And so cool. they uh, they're running a campaign currently on one of our landing pages. Uh, one of our designers helped um, design the landing page itself. Okay. And uh, it's the campaign is is for them to get votes um, as part of a Google Impact award challenge okay so cool it's uh it's pretty exciting to to be able to help not-for-profits achieve their goals in these ways absolutely yeah very cool we also i mean we also do the the donation um bit too where it's important for us with ladies learning code as i mentioned we host mm-hmm. all their workshops um and we also do give them a cash donation so that they can wow they can feed all their um their hungry yeah. learners yeah absolutely yeah. that's excellent no i think it's so important to I mean, obviously, be connecting with the community, but then looking at who in your community, uh, whether it's online or in person, mm-hmm. are doing some pretty special things and to really give them extra support in whatever way that can be. So, yeah, you know, very cool. Uh, we also do, um, as part of this Technology Community Alliance, mm-hmm. um, it, 
uh, in association with the BC Tech Association, yes. uh, a, a ping pong tournament. So oh, I don't know I've if you've heard, heard about is, tech I, pong. I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. totally. It's, uh, it's it, growing. It, it is growing. So <laughs> last year we had 27 different tech companies from all over Vancouver and raised $50,000. So for the last three years, we've raised just under $170,000 wow. for Vancouver charities. That's amazing. It is amazing. Ping and pong. So, Who would have thought? Pong. Well, <laughs> you, live, you go into a tech office, there is a st- uh, there I is guess it's always like, a ping pong always table? Always a ping pong table. I, okay, yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah. It was that, but you know, between ping pong and foosball. And okay. I'm glad we went ping pong. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's typically held in the fall sometimes. We're looking at October again this year. Okay. And uh, if you... And, and, we accept teams that aren't necessarily just tech as well. Okay. We had Colliers, they were um, Well, we're kind of tech here yeah. at Vancouver Real. <laughs> exactly. you know, we use tech all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just met with Spud last week, and, okay. and they were, and I was like, yeah, Spud, you know, Spud can They're doing good stuff. jump in and, cool. and have a team this year. So. Okay, when is it again? What month? Uh, so we're going to do it in October, and right. uh, it's a $1,500 buy-in, so cool. we have to donate a minimum of $1,500. Gotcha. And of course, most teams raise um, double that. and. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity to get out, have some fun, and also make, um, you know, all, you know, have come together as, as a, a community and make a big impact. Awesome. Love mm-hmm. it. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Ping pong. Who doesn't love ping pong? <laughs> What's the difference between ping pong and table tennis, though? Is there a difference? I don't know. That's a good question. I think. Dig into that one. Tape. No, that's pickleball. Table, maybe ten, maybe it's bigger. I don't know. I don't know. I have to, <laughs> I have to wiki that one. It's definitely ping pong, though, folks. So just, know, so if you're a table tennis player, you're like, oh. Yeah. But maybe you can convert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your company is a young demographic for sure that is connected online throughout most of the day. So how does Unbounce, un, Unbounce, I don't know why I keep saying that. What does Unbounce promote? How does Unbounce promote having like a good balance of technology and personal life like in the office? Like how do you mm-hmm. guys kind of support your, your team members to you know make sure they have a good healthy balance of tech and then personal well-being? Right. That's a, that's a great question. So I think even physically the way that the office is set up, um, our leadership and our amazing office manager have, uh, we've leased the significant amount of space so that we're not, um, we have the room to spread out nice. and to go be flexible cool. during our work day. Mm-hmm. Also, um, there is, there's plants, there's uh, mm-hmm. green walls, like just those little things right. kind of make a, a big difference. Yeah. Um, we stop work on Friday afternoons around four o'clock and everyone gets together and has some kombucha or nice. um, tea or beer or wine and, uh, and we'll all just socialize for an cool. hour before we head out for our Friday plans. Nice. And then we do things um, throughout the week, team, team building nice. uh, type. It's, it's a priority for us to get our teams together to, to connect and bond and we had a drum circle. Um, oh, cool. I, I That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's so much fun. Yeah, I organized a drum circle. Good for um, you. I guess about maybe two months ago, and we had it uh, on the floor, on this empty floor above our other two floors. Okay. Um, we didn't really communicate to the rest of the, the company mm-hmm. <laughs> that this was happening. Yeah. And so they were all a bit concerned that Jumanji yeah. was <laughs> coming. Wow. Um, but those types of things. Yeah. Were, no, that's great. Mm-hmm. So I heard, I heard space, the actual space, having lots of physical space, mm-hmm. so you're not living on top of each other pretty much. Right. Uh, greenery and life in the plant, in the, mm-hmm. in the office there, just bringing plants in. I mean, plant, plants, I mean, they're our relatives, you know, like they, we, they have DNA too mm-hmm. and they're, they're awesome. So I, I get that. Um, and then, yeah, ending work early on Fridays, so that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. And then there's a whole host of really fantastic benefits that, cool. that we provide, including four weeks vacation and there's a culture of taking the vacation and going off on an adventure and wow and that's um that's it's really unique um we also have a 500 hundred dollar health and wellness budget so cool. our employees could use it to float mm-hmm. or buy a new snowboard cool. um i was yeah, gonna say like, it sounds like the company culture there could be born to float to be honest with you i'm very curious <laughs> we'll, we'll have to talk about that a little bit more because it's seems very synergistic obviously people that work very hard but also need to decompress and mm-hmm. and enjoy life and, and obviously floating is kind of like a very a powerful way to do that um but i got another question here for you mm-hmm. okay so living downtown can ask a lot of young professionals and families so how do you take time out to disconnect in vancouver do you have a uh, a place that you go to when you want to give yourself a break personally 
Hmm, it's a great question. How do you how do you decompress in this city of ours? This beautiful city of ours. It's you know, it's not like we're living in New York or anything <laughs> like that or Toronto. It's we have it pretty good, but we're so fortunate with our green space. Mm -hmm. Yesterday's example, I'm out all afternoon, and yeah. um, I went to Granville Island with my husband mm -hmm. and my son, and then we uh, walked home. And on the way home, we hit up three parks. Nice. So wow. that's in less than five kilometers. You've right. got three beautiful parks, and you know they, we. We definitely hit those slides and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and just in, enjoyed, I think, being out on the seawall. That's for sure. Eh? It's, uh, I, I grew up in Edmonton, so for me, I still can't believe it when I get to ride my bike to work right. um, cool. in the middle of February or yeah. being out, you know, before May and there's no snow on the ground. That's yeah, yeah. It's cool. it's not about escaping the city. It's about yeah. finding the 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 kind of moments of being recharged in the city. Totally. Yeah, I think that's a great point, too. I think in the city, we have uh, a lot of places that we can go to, whether it's the beach, um, different parks that you've mentioned, or different little community spots within mm -hmm. the city, like Gastown's a really cool place. You can just walk around Granville Island, you know, obviously English Bay, yeah. walking on the St Stanley Park. We have a lot just within, you know, a very short distance to, to mm -hmm. tap into and, um you know, rebalance ourselves, like and just give ourselves that break from whatever we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. and just, just enjoy, you know, the fruits of where we are at, you know sure. what I mean? So yeah. no, that's really cool. And I think that turning off my phone has, has been a really big part of that. Mm. And, uh, and I'm incredibly connected throughout the week and right. especially in events world and community, a lot of things happen that are not necessarily within that nine to five. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I'm, you know, get home after my social Friday, Boom. I really turn off my devices Smart. and, and, uh, and work. It's, it's not easy, but work on being present. Yeah, for absolutely. Family. That's yeah. no, that's, that's, I think a huge piece that people, uh, a lot of people are bringing awareness to and try to strive more balance and, you know, mm -hmm. these devices do call us nonstop because there's a lot you can be doing on them. As, as amazing as they are, as a technolo technological advance, you know, they can, they have their downfalls as well, yeah, right? And I definitely. think we're learning and becoming more aware of that and educated, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned in your bio that uh, you shared with us um, that you're part of the BC Tech Association. You actually mentioned that early in this conversation mm -hmm. as well. So if you don't mind, um, we would love to chat about the community you are building for the tech industry and young millennials looking to move into this industry in Vancouver. So mm -hmm. these young, up-and-coming, you know, right. workers and, and creative people. Um, can you talk a bit about that for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a huge, huge fan of our tech um, industry in the city, and I think it is... Um, a, absolutely great sector to be working in. I came from a museum, education, not-for-profit world okay. and uh, knew that after having uh, having my son, I needed to change it up a little bit mm. and, um, and wanted to be working with a um, for-profit uh, business that was really concerned or making impact, mm. a social impact. And so uh, for me, that jump was um, was exciting, but it was also a little bit nerve-wracking I didn't think right. that I had necessarily the technical skills and um, that's one thing I would encourage someone to say that you know the skills that you have are transferable and mm. a lot of times tech companies are looking for that culture fit so um, it's more so about how how you align with the individuals that you'll be working with and then picking up those those skills and becoming literate right. um, is something that you can always do we've got some really great uh, opportunities through like Red Academy and Lighthouse Labs, uh, their coding schools, even workshops through Ladies Learning Code or Women Who Code. Cool. Um, uh, HTML 500 was a recent event uh, in the city, and uh, you've had 500 people in a room and taught them how to code in one day. So, wow. so those skills are out there, mm -hmm. um, and so being able to just pick up those skills and then look at what you.